So it's Friday, April 29th, and I tweeted that I was looking forward to two things today. Number one, the finale of Ozark. <laughs> I don't know how many of you watched that show. Number two, we were supposed to hear what the results were of the completion of the environmental assessment for Starship. Well, we can't always get what we want. That has been delayed again. Unfortunately, the completion of the environmental assessment by the FAA has been delayed for a fourth time. Now this of course influences the timeline of when we can see SpaceX's Starship launch from Texas. The FAA now expects to release its assessment by May 31st. However, like I said, this is the fourth delay we've seen. So could that also be delayed? It's yeah. SpaceX, of course, needs this license from the FAA to conduct further Starship flight tests and begin operational launches from Boca Chica, Texas. Starbase being the Disneyland for space nerds like you and I. Now, Elon said in February that the worst case scenario is that they would be delayed for six to eight months to build up the Cape Launch Tower and launch Starship from there. And that's, he said that in February. So, could that be a reality? Well, to me, it's looking more and more like it. There is a theory on Twitter circulating that Starship won't launch before SLS, thanks to the powers that be. I wanna know from you, I've, I've tweeted about the delay and I had a lot of people say, oh, this is you know all the FAA's fault, but then other people were saying, no, Starship is not ready. So forget the FAA, that's, that's not actually the issue here, Starship wouldn't even be ready if they had the clearance. So for additional context, I wanted to reach out to my friend, Zach Golden, and you track a lot of the activity at Starbase. So for those who are unfamiliar, tell us a little bit about your involvement with Starship. Well, uh, I actually kind of got involved in this really uh, by chance, you know, I, I got laid off of work like way back in the day in 2020 when the pandemic started. I was like taking classes at the same time I was waiting to go back to work and pretty much, you know, in my spare time, I was watching a lot of like Lab Padre live streams and, you know, I kind of got addicted to um, the Starship program through that time, like as I was just you know, at home with nothing else to do. Like, you know, that's kind of how I, I got through that. We both know that there's been yet another delay. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people are just blaming the FAA. Some people are saying it doesn't matter. They're not ready regardless. So I want to get your opinion of well, what you think is going on. I think the lines are starting to get blurred on like whether or not they are ready to fly if they did have clearance. So I would say initially when this when this delay process started that like we did, they didn't really have, they weren't ready to fly. Like I, I personally never thought that Ship 20 or Booster 4 would fly. So these vehicles are basically like the ultimate test vehicle. You know what I mean? They're basically the prototype of the prototype of the prototype. You know what I mean? Like they're using this to test the not only you know, the first vehicle to have, you know, 29 engines, the first vehicle to get transported with 29 engines, the first vehicle on the launch mount with 29 engines, the first vehicle to like connect to all the, the pipe work, to have a ship on top of it, to do all of these tests. And then you want it to fly too. I'm like, there's, there's, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I was always waiting for the next vehicle myself. Here we are now though, when you're, when you're at booster seven, um, you know, that ideally should have been the one that is ready to fly, but obviously there's been some other things happening with that one. There's things other than just the vehicles. I mean, you have the actual, um, you know, stage zero itself. So they've, they've changed out a lot of components in the launch tower recently. And a lot of those are some pretty critical components in my opinion. So you have the quick disconnect for the Starship. They've actually had to like, completely redesign that for the new version of the ship. Um, so they're just starting that process to reinstall that now. Um, you know, the chopsticks actually seem to be getting some upgrades as well too. And they've actually done some internal changes on in, on the tower as well. So in my opinion, like all of that stuff had to happen for them to reach the point where they're like able to do that first orbital flight. And 
I don't I don't think they're I think they're like slowly getting to the point where like yeah we're we're actually kind of close facility wise in order to actually be able to do this but because of the delays there's always this like rush in the background to get pad 39a up and running as quickly as possible yes every time we see videos of it it seems like they are moving super quickly getting things you know they have like five tower sections ready to go right now um but i feel like they want nine sections ready to go right now and i think that they're might be pissed that they don't have nine sections ready to go it's very rare that you see cranes just like sitting around doing nothing in on spacex property and that's i mean I, I receive a lot of and i'm really thankful for this a lot of people tend to like just dm me pictures on twitter like hey i took a tour of ksc today can you see anything new here and i'm like sadly no because like i can tell that like they're just the crane is just sitting there waiting and you know this happened at starbase as well but that's different because it was the first design the first iteration of all of these parts right so now that they have the the design finalized it's really like you're not making too many changes to like drawings or anything like that when you're fabricating these things so you know things should move a lot quicker because it's the second time around you know you already have these things finalized your tooling is already set up you're, you're basically like printing multiple versions of something right yeah. so that being said this this second tower should be drastically faster than the first but it's just not currently so from, from a supply chain professional point of view i can sense when there's an issue what do you think the combo is going to be i know that some articles say like booster seven or eight and ship 24. booster nine and ship 24. final answer any reason not to have ship 24 fly because it's the, the it, everything should be everything should be the same with that one as far as um it's not like yes there are some major changes with that one but it's not as big as like making the change that they made with the booster which is adding those additional um four engines so at some point, they're going to have a major change with the Starship when they add an additional three Raptor engines or um, vacuum Raptor engines, but that's not where we're at right now. So I think I think that people sometimes like get like attached to these inanimate objects, but it's like they all have a purpose. You know what I mean? Like they, you need you need to go through this process of testing, and you're not just testing the vehicle; you're testing the actual stage zero right the most important part of it and like you're literally i describe chip 20 as like a, a, a basically a trash can you know what i mean it's a trash can for testing the launch tower when it came to booster four and chip 20 like i was like people like please calm down like stop wanting these two vehicles to fly like you do not want these ones to fly like the, the, the things that i saw them install in the launch tower this week told me that chip 20 should not fly like the types of upgrades that they've done to the cryo tubing system in that in that um structure like if those if the basically let's just say it this way they installed a massive filtration system for the cryo tubing system in sol inside of the launch tower and that just wasn't there before so number one if it wasn't there initially and you had to install it as a secondary thing then it's a result of something that happened and last month we started seeing a delivery of a very important piece of this puzzle the raptor 2 engines the first raptor v2 delivery ever appeared to arrive at starbase on march 30th we did get a glimpse at the v2 engine about a month and a half before that during the starship presentation back in february that was actually a damaged v2 prototype that they had as a backdrop for Elon Musk's presentation. And there we clearly saw that Raptor went on a diet. <laughs> and now these are faster to make, they're more cost efficient, and they produce more thrust. What's not to love? So the Raptor V2 engines that are on site at Starbase right now are those that made it through without damaging or destroying themselves in testing, and they are starting to stack up inside of the production tents but we know for that orbital launch we need at least 39 qualified raptor v2 engines to begin that integrated testing and they need to pass several major static fire milestones to prepare for the flight 
So we know that at the very least, SpaceX already has enough engines to begin static fire tests with a full cluster of 13 central Raptors on the booster. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see that orbital launch in the coming weeks, but here is, well, here's two things that are Starship related as a consolation prize of sorts for you. I was recently asked to check out and review this spaceship lamp. It's really a Starship lamp, let's be real. But I wanted to open it up together. The box is smaller than I expected. So um, this man reached out to me from Florida. Oh, okay. So here we have part one. Looks like there's three parts in total. Um, it even says Ellie in space. That's pretty cool. Cut it away from yourself. Oh, it's so cute. Wow. Okay, so this is 3D printed. Uh, you can see little, little tiny baby, little tiny baby grid fins. So let's put her on. Okay. Easy, easy to stack so far. Oh, I like this one. All right, and here we go. So let's stack her up. So I'm gonna be honest, just initial first impression. I actually like it a lot better in person than what I saw in the pictures so far. Um, it's a lot smaller than I expected, but I think uh, it's perfect for a nightstand and having it as a little night lamp. So here she is, Ellie in space. Um, this is it fully stacked. Wow, I just, I just did that. And it has, this is the on and off button, I believe. So let's figure it out. Now you get to see a part of the Alien Space Studio, my apartment <laughs> that you've probably never seen before, my kitchen table. But um, we gotta unwrap this guy and plug, plug it in. And it even comes with, you know, the adapter that you need. Okay. <laughs> so I will admit when this man sent me an email uh, about his spaceship lamp, I wasn't initially sure what to expect. Um, but upon receiving it, this is actually really cool. It's a great size. For some reason, I thought it was going to be way bigger. So we have our remote and I'm gonna hold it up. I just love this, it's Starship. It's called the Spaceship Lamp. Come on, we know. We know what's going on here. Let's try to change the color. I gotta turn it on. Oh, wow. Okay, so I just put it on strobe mode. Let's get some flash mode, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not gonna become a beatboxer, and that's okay. Uh, this is really creative. This is really well done. This is very pink. It's kind of hard to see there. This is great. So this is definitely very nice to have. In the meantime, while we're all waiting, waiting for the Starship orbital launch, you know what? This wouldn't be accurate if we didn't do one more test. Are you serious? I come in my room. Did you? <laughs> I'm trying to find a place where I can make it dark. Oliver, cheese. Okay, are you guys ready? All right, turning off the lights, turning on the lamp. Woohoo! Okay. This is some mood lighting. <laughs> Maybe it's just the color. Uh, yeah, this is great. I am officially adding this to my nightstand collection. This is really awesome. Uh, like I said, I was, for whatever reason, kind of skeptical about the email when I first got it. You know, I get a lot of, I get a lot of strange emails. Um, but I said, hey, send a sample my way. Let me actually test it out myself and see if I even like it. And 
it's really cool. I, I love the concept. Um, you know, obviously you can customize the color of the light here. It's extremely light, extremely easy to stack, to set up, to take down. If you're interested in this, I will put a link in the description. Again, thank you for going on this little uh, test experiment with me. I seriously had not opened it until I made this video because I wanted a genuine reaction. My genuine reaction is I didn't expect to like it as much as I do, so that's the good news. Okay, here's the second consolation prize, not to completely spam you, but I've been holding on to these little clips because there hasn't been much Starship news in a while, so here's the second one. Who's ready for another episode of What's in the Box? I'm ready. Do you know what's in the box? I know what's in the box. But I want to show you guys. I've waited to open this uh, on camera. So. What? Okay, this is really cool. I still have not been to a launch. This is the closest I'm going to get for the time being. Don't worry, I'll make it out to a launch. In fact, this is specifically what I would like to see when I see my inaugural launch. I mean, I would want to see Starship be launched too, okay? But I would love, la la love, to see, wow, Falcon Heavy. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Put it in the stand here. Wow, yeah, okay. This is super cool. So this came from my friends at Bohemso. They make beautiful, stunning 3D printed models of uh, several things. I have Starship, Perseverance, Tesla Bot, even this nifty little keychain. And now to add to my collection, which is growing, I have Falcon Heavy. We have SpaceX on the side. It fits very easily into the stand here. The American flag, Falcon Heavy. You even have some detailing on the grid fins. Look at that detail. So a big thank you to Bohemso. I love having uh, these 3D printed models added to my collection, which as you can see behind me, is growing. These make a great addition to your home office. And yeah, I highly recommend. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's always fun to open up the box and see what's inside. So I wanna know from you, do you think that even if they got regulatory clearance that they're just not ready, plain and simple? Or do you think that Maybe there's something else going on. Thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support. I'm hoping to make a trip back to Starbase soon. And on that trip, I'm hoping to interview a very special guest, one that I'm pretty confident all of you will appreciate. So look forward to that. I will see you in the next video.